So one of the things that I notice uh, when teaching this is, because I explain a variety of things uh, and it takes a little bit, it often logs me out. So right after our break, I had to check and yeah, I got logged out, so I had to sign back in. You might want to, if you're still on this screen waiting, you might want to click on anything and then maybe go back and confirm that you're still logged in, because if you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in eventually. So, as I said, eventually you're going to be graded, or you're going to be assessed, that you've been able to create an account and publish something. Obviously, something real is a better <coughs> sense of accomplishment, but anything that you publish, any account that you create, will be fine for credit. So I have this account that I created and it's fake and I've got this CBDB app that still needs a lot of polish. Yours probably still does if it's using my graphics and all of that and my fonts that look weird. So we will do this and we will set this up to see how it works but there's a few things to, to have here of note. When publishing apps, each app store has their own criteria. So Apple is the one that's most notorious for difficulty. Um, closed system for the shortest answer. They've got an approval process. You create the account, you upload your app, they test it in theory and check it that it doesn't have viruses and such and then allow it or not. And throughout the 10 years now, a little bit less than 10 years, of having an Apple App Store, there have been countless horror stories of companies spending thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, to make their app, and their app is rejected. And for a long time, they've been a black box. They don't quite tell you what is wrong. They don't quite tell you what you violated. They've gotten better at that, but for a long time, they had a very closed system. They called it the walled garden you had to be approved and then maybe version 2 and just a lot of effort on the opposite end we have Android we have the Android system which is an open system no approval process now that is changing because of it, it being so open that means many very junky apps can be there and are there but Apple, they always try to have the best apps, even though that not ha hasn't always been true. I remember in the very beginning when all of this was brand new, there were so many fart apps on the iTunes store, and now there aren't that many. Well, if you want to publish those kinds of apps, great, Android. So they are the opposite for a long time, and they're trying to change because viruses and malware so let's just, for simplicity, it's an open system and no approval process. You upload your app after paying your $28 and your app shows up in about 24 hours. In the middle is Amazon. Semi-open, semi-closed, whatever you'd like to say, I'd say semi-open. Basic approval process. They're not going to go over it with a fine tooth comb like if you submit it to Apple. They will test it out a little bit and if there's a problem they'll tell you. And they're pretty open about it. They want to be, they need to be, because the two big app stores are Apple and Android. And even though Amazon is one of the biggest stores in the world, one of the biggest corporations in the world and most profitable in the world, they don't quite have the app ecosystem that, the, that these two other ones have. Apple has the mind share. Everyone thinks of App Store, iTunes Store, Apple phones. Even though, technically, market share-wise, Apple doesn't have the largest market share of devices. It's Android by a big margin, like 60 to 80 percent, somewhere around there, of mobile devices are Android. Quick show of hands here. Raise your hand if you've got an Android device. All right. Raise your hand if you've got an iPhone. Worldwide, yeah, it's it's really big. It's really big. So, how many have you have an Android, uh, an iPhone device at at the moment? A few people, okay. It's kind not quite even, but it is a little 
even here in this small sample size. But yeah, globally, Android, they're, they're the big ones. So uh, Amazon, it behooves them to try to be as open as possible with some limitations to protect users. And that's why it's free to create the account. That's why their approval process is not that deep and the apps go in. So if Apple is taking a lot of effort to keep the bad apps out, and Android doesn't have as much effort, that comes from the community. Every app can be reported. So if I downloaded an app and my device got weird, I'm going to go and complain on Android, and then the app will, will get taken out. But it's sort of like an innocent until proven guilty on Android. On Apple, it's a guilty until proven innocent. And on Amazon, it's a little bit in the middle. You, um, you have this leeway to publish. For, I have to check what the latest, um, I have to check how it is in the latest version of, of Apple, so let me skip that for the moment. But on, on Android, you can unpublish your apps easily. On, on the official Google App Store, you can turn off, you can unpublish your app. If a person downloaded it and it's on their device, you can't snatch it out of their device. But you can turn it off from the App Store for no more, no more downloads. On Amazon, it's a little more effort. Requires tech support to unpublish. There is, there, you will be able to unpublish your app. It's just that you have to go through their help system and, and put a little uh, a request ticket to say, can you unpublish my app? Whereas on Google, there's a button that says unpublish the app. And I've got to double check on, on Apple. I haven't seen it very recently, but uh, I think it's relatively easily. Probably. <laughs> Maybe they'll give you a, a deep discount of fifty dollars. <laughs> so I think it's it's pretty easy there too. I forget who it was, but I remember there was a, there was an interesting um, case of this app store a few years ago where people some snafu happened in the system that people that had bought the book nineteen eighty four suddenly it disappeared from their devices is very ironic because of the content of that book. But I don't remember which app store it was, but one of these removed it from the people's actual devices. So for us, I say this because we're going to create a store listing for our app, version 0 0.9. And if you do publish it for real, if we go through this process, which for today I will say is optional, but eventually for the assessment, will be required. Uh, you don't have to go through the final step to click publish if you don't want to yet. And most likely you don't want to. Your app is not quite there. If you're using my code, I wouldn't quite publish that yet. The fonts look weird and the colors and such. Functionality is fine. Design needs a little polish. So what we need to do from this screen is on the bottom right corner we've got add a new app and either if you click on the little drop-down triangle or you click the button you'll get the same question we have the ability to publish an app for Android the mobile web PCs or Macs well we've only got an Android app at the moment to work with mobile web would be like just the www folder of our project and PC and Mac well we didn't set up our app to to publish to Windows or Mac operating system you either click the triangle or you click the button and it'll ask the same question. So mobile web, services for web apps or mobile optimized websites. And PC and Mac actually installable desktop apps. We want Android, which will be on Kindle devices or any Android device. Next. There will be several things we need to fill in. We probably won't get to them all, and that's fine. I plan on having two days with this. We've got an app title required, app category required, and some optionals. So I would recommend 
for the class to use your last name, CBDB. You could call it CBDB, and there's going to be lots of CBDB apps. But when I do this for with students, I recommend when we make our own apps, especially with this class app, put your last name so that you can find your version as opposed to your classmate's version. App SKU is optional. SKU is stock keeping unit and is just some internal name that you use for yourself to keep track of your apps. If I work with like three or four apps internally in my system that I save in Word or Excel or something, I'm keeping track of all my apps with a specific code name, the SKU. A unique to your app string that you define yourself. It's optional. You don't have to fill anything in, but you can call it something like it's recommending there perhaps also your um, the ID. The SKU becomes your ID. Okay, the SKU becomes your ID. So I would not really, well, it's going to add it at the end. So it's going to read our config XML file and find that part and then add to it. I'm gonna, I won't put anything there. It's not really required. That's if you're keeping track of your various apps yourself. Just more of a unique identifier. But it'll already get the unique identifier from your config XML. Category. So based on our app, the CBDB app, what might be a good category here? Books and comics, Books and comics probably. Um, perhaps utilities. There's also utilities here. So no wrong answer, but this is again about the marketing to help you get found. Maybe even reference. Maybe eventually I'm going to add to my to the app some way that it tells the user these are the most valuable comics in your collection, or these are the most important comics, you know, for reference. So I'm going to go with books and comics. Anyone would be fine and this can be changed and some of these have subcategories so further I have here book info ebook creation readers and players and that's optional books and comics is enough but if you have a subcategory that makes sense I would select it this goes back to more of these ideas of marketing Add your app to the right category. To help you get found. People that are interested in a certain type of app are going to browse the section of utilities. And they might find yours. They might, they might search utilities and organize it by newest app. I just uploaded mine last month. Mine might be new. So it's just more ways to market to get found. You don't want to abuse it by changing your category to get a new idea to try to reach a new audience, though. Because there are some ways where the system can be abused. And that big old wall of text that none of us read in there, it says stuff like that. Don't abuse the system. Don't do fake things. Don't try to exploit. So choose it. Pick the best one, keep it like that. Don't pick different ones every few weeks to try to get more people, more downloads. Customer support, support contact. Whatever I filled in on the previous screen when I created my account will be filled in here. And if I want different contact info, I can fill it in. This is what I said earlier. It is required eventually to have this information. So that's what we filled it in the first time. Save that. And then we get six tabs. We need to complete all six tabs for eventually for us to have the button active submit. And that's the one that I'm saying. You don't need to do this one yet if you're not quite comfortable. Because when you do submit, it, they will review it. And in about 24 hours, your app will be available. If you do submit it today before you leave, it will be available by the time you come back on Thursday. You don't have to submit it today, that's fine. I probably won't yet, because one of the big things that takes a lot of time to set up is images and multimedia, which we'll get to. For general info, 
looks good if you need to edit any of these screens after you set it up you can always go back to edit you can do these in any order but you need all six if you're gonna submit later on when we do version 2 we're gonna have a seventh tab a tab that shows what's new do you ever see that you've got a bunch of apps ready to be updated and it tells you here's what's new added camera feature fix this bug whatever so for version 2 we'll have to do a, a brand new tab 7 first tab to look at perhaps availability and pricing where would you like this app to be available default is all countries that Amazon reaches which is like almost 200 countries and territories in the world if you only want your app to be available in certain countries you can go there and target continent by continent probably fine to leave it for everywhere for our particular app price is free or not if you select to sell you know you put something like 99 US dollars or 0 99 that is be careful there not 99 dollars 99 cents and then it'll be the corresponding value throughout the world So I'm going to keep this as a free app. If you do a paid app, it will automatically calculate and such, or you can set your own exact prices. When would you like the publishing to start? So here you leave it blank, and as soon as it's approved, it'll be visible for people to download. If you'd like to do some sort of launch, if you want to do even more marketing like get on Twitter and Facebook and start hyping your app saying coming soon amazing new app coming soon release date uh, November 30th coming soon and then have it release on that day that's something that you could do I'll just save that screen I'm, I'm releasing it everywhere for free as soon as possible oh uh, one more has this app already been released now we have this app that could be released on Google Play, Apple App Store, and Windows. If we have already released the app, it would be a good idea to say yes, it already was released last week on Apple, let's say. If you release to Amazon first, they like that. They like that you're using their system first, and that translates to them promoting your app a little better than if you had already published elsewhere. This is sort of like a little unwritten rule, but it could benefit you by releasing your apps first here with a little bit of a bump. So now I'll save that. I have two out of six. Description. display title that's the name that will appear when you get uh, when someone finds your results under search we've got short description long description of this one app we wrote a description for our whole app account previously now here's a spot to further go into detail to promote what our app is up to 1200 characters 4000 for the long one and then also bullet points Let's say for this app, the only comic book tracking app you'll need easily save, easily save and update your collection. I wouldn't quite write the whole 1200 words. You know, one line or two is fine here. Long description is where you can write that whole soliloquy. And there is where I would write as much detail about why this app is amazing. So if you do have a penchant for writing, I would put, use all that purple prose to, to your advantage. Because a lot of the most profitable and famous and influential companies 
are, are thus because of marketing. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most valuable companies in humanity because, yeah, their product is great, but their marketing is really good too. As I said, Google, let's say, Android, they've got 80% market share. 80, let's say 80% market share. But then when a, a new Apple device comes out, there's a line around the building. And their commercials, everyone wants to watch them. And their stock price is so high up there. And their, and their uh, market cap capitalization is in the billions, bigger than like five nations combined. A lot of that is the marketing. A lot of that is not showing a commercial of that new phone, but showing a commercial of families enjoying their time together and taking photos on the phone. Or deep sea diving with whales, recording it on the phone. So marketing is a very important aspect for all of this stuff. And therefore, take advantage of your creative writing skills or degree. And here, you can write interesting things to help you get found. I'm going to think of some good stuff to write on that later. Come back to that in a moment. Bullet points, one on each line. So how would we say in one sentence that we can have lots of people log in with their own account? Pull user accounts. Anything? like that, whatever terminology. Multiple user accounts. Track or store unlimited. The reason to say this is because there's a lot of apps out there that are limited. That for free, you can do, you know, you can save 10 comics. And then after that, okay, 99 cents to save 100 more. And 99 cents to save 200 more. So here I want to say store unlimited comics. Three to five concise app features <coughs> each on a new line. One more. Eventually we're going to add social media features for version two. So I wouldn't add it yet because it doesn't have it. Truth in advertising. So what we could do here furthermore for one item is uh, take or snap photos of your collection. If you think of a few more, up to five, you can add them in if you want. Long description. Easily, well, I already said easily. We can say uh, fun app to uh, store your comic book collection this part of marketing also is your voice how are you going to speak to the audience contractions or not first person third person speech how are you going to communicate here I'm saying in terms of you directly to the person is about to download there's no right or wrong answer. This is just how are you going to market your business, communicate, and in the other class, the SEO class and such, we go into much more detail. But I'll make the note here. When writing any of this content, when writing any, con any copy, that's the fancy word for the text, content, text. When writing any copy, what is your voice? Contractions, slang, style, voice, third third person, first person, all of that. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. But what might be right or wrong is if I'm creating, you know, some sort of financial app, serious business, I wouldn't want to use too much slang or contractions and such. It might not quite fit with the style of, of the app. Or maybe, yes, maybe I am creating an app you know, for younger people, so I do want to use the hip lingo. So 
that's something to fill in. Keywords are optional, but I would recommend to use them. More keywords, simple keywords of what people might search for to get found. Use a comma or white space to separate your terms. So I could say comics, Marvel, DC, Image, Disney. Um, I could say storage or tracking, utility, fun. Be careful here. A lot of these screens, they have a save in yellow, and then they have save and. You usually don't want to do the save and. You want to do save, because save and will save the English version of your description, and then you need to provide a different language. It will not automatically translate this to Spanish, or Hebrew, or Japanese, or anything. You have to provide that other language. So be careful. Don't click the Save and. It's available here and in a couple of other screens. You want to click the regular old Save. Maybe you do have the ability to write these descriptions in other languages. Great. Or maybe you can hire someone or ask someone to volunteer. Great. I would go in and... Uh, what's that? We might be able to ask Alexa. We'd have to also retranslate our app, probably. And there is a globalization plugin. There is a plugin to have our app be in multiple languages. So um, we can add more translations. That gives me three out of six. We will cover more images and multimedia on Thursday because there's a lot of things I want to cover here. But notice we have to provide a small icon, 11 by four, 114 by 114, a large icon, 512 sized, screenshots of these specific dimensions, recommended promo image, which I would say yes, we should use it optional video. We're not going to cover that one, but I'll give some advice on that one. A cool little video that shows off how your app works. That takes a lot of effort and setup, but we'll cover that next time. If you're going to uh, cover, if you're going to, if you're going to publish also for Fire TVs and such, if people are watching, if people are connecting to Amazon on their TV, on their Fire Stick or Fire TV, they can download your app. Your app can run on their TV. And this will require various icons. So we'll get back to this on Thursday. But here we're going to have to have a variety of graphics. So I can give us some graphics to start off with next time. But if you're doing your own app, you want to use your own graphics. We'll get back into Photoshop and such next time content rating. So I'm going to have to skip that one for the moment. Subject matter. These are where you need to select the ratings. None, moderate, or strong in all of these. So you guys tell me. None, moderate, or strong violence in our app. Cartoon violence. None. Drugs. None. Nudity. None. Sex. None. Now, yeah, the comics themselves can have this stuff, but that's not our problem. Our app, when you load this up, doesn't have this stuff. But if a person is saving these kinds of comics, that's out of our control. Academic. This application is for educational purposes? Not really. And it's better to often err on the side of caution, meaning usually put no or none is probably usually safe. But again, that big wall of text that no one read but we agreed to says you're not going to fake this, that you'll put this for real. If you do have nudity in your app, even artistic nudity, I suppose, that would go under moderate. And then you have to say here veiled or partial nudity. Additional info, yes and no. Account creation or other personal information collected? Yes. 
we do create the user does create an account now we're not storing at the moment we're not storing their info on any of our servers or anything like that but they do create an account with their email and password personal info no advertising at the moment is it directed to kids under 13 no anyone that might read comics so it's not just for 13 year olds or less no gambling really location detection we're not really using any GPS plug-in or anything like that I would say no user generated content or user to user communication what do you think yes in terms of this first part user generated content a person is typing comics and descriptions and photos they are generating content themselves the user is creating something it doesn't have to be something like snapchat that's obviously gener user generated content or Facebook people are creating things and putting it in the Facebook network obvious for us it's still yes because the user themselves is generating some content it's not going into our cloud or anything like that but it's better to say yes here there is no user to user communication but it says or so safer to put yes here privacy policy required this is an address to a website where you explain the privacy policy of your app. If you have selected to turn on user generated and account creation, it will be required. If you don't turn those on, it will be optional. But honestly, we do have account creation and user generated content. <coughs> Notice if I do user generated, it doesn't ask for it required. When you do create accounts, it does ask for that. So here's how I would say to, fi to fill this out privacy policy URL regarding privacy policy URL. Set up a simple web page that explains how you'll use the user info or content. Search online for the keyword um, app privacy policy example or template or boilerplate or generator. Search online for free examples which you can use or make one up yourself and just say we don't use your info for nothing that's fine great put that up if you want but the more verbose this is and explanatory the better because people this will be listed in the app store it'll say you know user generate user create generated content it'll say privacy policy issues and such so if you explain how you're using the content that's a lot better not a lot of people will read it but this will cover you in case there's some issues that someone says well you stole my you stole my email account or something so what I would say then is get a free account at WordPress and then you'll have you know, victorapps.com uh, victorapps.wordpress.com slash privacy you'll have a, a page on that free account where you explain your privacy policy and that'll satisfy the required privacy policy URL field so if you search anywhere online and you search for uh, app privacy policy example sample generator there's one iOS app privacy policy example and then you on your own go look up a free one a paid one a first one free next one paid 
apparently there's app privacy policy generator dot firebase app dot com provide the required info this is going over to Google generate personally identifiable info cool generator dot app privacy dot net I haven't checked any of these you can um, keep searching I will mention one here but I won't record it so take your own notes here so if you want to make a note of that that's an example you can copy and paste that one if you want and change it yourself but I won't put it in the notes or record it And so that's a particular one from our company and um, use that and just change the copyright date and obviously the information there and put your own information and that's good enough that says you know you're not gonna hold us liable for any damages damages lawyer wise means monetary losses not that the app not that you dropped it on your on your foot and hurt yourself is that you lost money or something like that that's damages monetarily you can use that as an example, or better yet, go find one of these generators, make your own version. <coughs> All right, so I'll save that one. And I've got four out of six. I've got that one all filled in. The level of my app and what it has and the policy. Notice I filled in one that is totally fake doesn't exist it'll accept it for these purposes educational purposes one last one then we'll wrap up for the day when we come back we'll do images and multimedia binary files There's a lot of little boxes here the most important again here we've got the save and don't do the save and you want the save save and here means I'm gonna save this one APK that I'll upload and I'll add another one the purpose of that is perhaps I designed one version of my app to target Android users on on 7.0 and another version on people on 4.0 so I can upload different versions of my app we're not gonna do that we're gonna have one version for everyone so you don't want to do save and you want to do save so first at the top here we have to upload our APK file actually the first thing would you like it encrypted with security yes or no probably yes you want to keep the the app safe and not have people uh, reverse engineer it and look at your code so yes then you can click here to upload or drop it if your app is more than 150 megabytes, you have to upload it via secure FTP. Ours is only 2 megabytes. We're fine. So either drop your APK there or click to upload. So my APK. Not the debug version, not the unaligned version, the final version. upload it do a little quick scan this shows here some information from my config XML there's my package hopefully you don't have the same package as mine either yours will be rejected or mine will be version code 1 version name there's that number right there 1.1.2017 1114 you cannot change this here you have to change it back in Visual Studio show more it just gives you more information of what what it sees it sees the permissions it sees that this has camera capability flashlight too it looks like internet needs some storage on the device many languages what screen sizes so we've got basic and and more 
So then right here, Amazon Fire Phone. Okay, it's on Amazon Fire Phones and Tablets. It's compatible with seven of their devices and not with 15. That may, some, may be something you care about or not. What I care about most is right here, non-Amazon devices. 102 different types of devices are supported. 30 seem to not be supported. You could go in there and check what that's what's going on with that. But based on this, we're going to reach you know, just about 200 different types of apps or devices. I'm fine with that. Language. This app is in English. We did not add the globalization plugin, the globalization Cordova plugin, to make it multilingual. If we did, we could have our app in multiple languages, and we would say it's in multiple languages. There's a check mark that you have to check on. There's no going around it, and this is just basically saying that your uh, app uh, can be exported and imported from the United States because it does not contain munitions level encryption. Encryption is a thing that is controlled. But you can't make apps about encryption, really, because you know that whole privacy or military concepts. So you have to check that on. And then uh, Amazon Maps. We don't have any map feature in our project. But this is saying, if you were using Google Maps, we're going to convert it to Amazon Maps. And th that's it. So it doesn't matter if we turn it on or off, because we don't have maps on our device, so just leave it on. Binary alias, you can leave it alone or change it. doesn't matter. This is our first version of this project, or you can call it CBDB1, just to match up with your file name. Uh, you can use dots and underscores, but not dashes. Numbers and letters, no symbols. If you need to give any testing instructions, you can type it in here, and someone at Amazon will follow those directions. If, if there was a problem with my APK, whoops, I messed up something on the package or whatever, you can remove it there or remove it there. Don't do save and, save and add because that, that'll be like adding different versions of the APK. You want to save. Yellow button. We have five out of six. We're going to end at this point. When we come back, we're going to look at um, Photoshop and make some graphics and some more uh, marketing material to get people excited about the app and I'll give advice and such about creating cool graphics and all of that. At this point, again, if you'd like to do the whole thing and do the whole publish today or tomorrow or whatever, you will have a real app that gets published to the real app stores. You can start telling your friends and family to download it. We're going to take one more day to do this, this part here. If that works, great. Then we're going to get back to version 2 and add more code and then publish it again and then talk about more marketing via social media. So we'll get to that on Thursday. I'm going to end the main lecture at this point and I'll put today's notes in the folder.